Welcome to another Black History in Atlanta video. We have a couple of things to discuss. This video will be a two part because I know I'm behind and I realized I was running my mouth so much in the bookstore that I didn't get a lot of footage. So I'm sorry, but let's go ahead and talk about the area that we are visiting. So we're going to a black owned bookstore, but we are going into Decatur, which is on the east side of Atlanta, specifically Kirkwood. Kirkwood is an area that had that small town charm and they really didn't want to be a part of Atlanta and all of the trains and railroad shenanigans that they had going on back in the day. So they decided, you know what, what we're going to do, we're going to do cute little streetcars. We're going to do that and that way that can be like an express way to Atlanta but I just wanted to paint the picture of how it was back then anyway fast forward to maybe about the mid 60s NAACP rallied with some parents because the all-white elementary school yeah we we can't have that because black kids need places to go to school too like come on now so they rallied together for desegregation and then a turn in the dynamic within Kirkwood changed around that time. And we're also going to be in the area that is close to Hosea Williams Drive, which is formerly Boulevard Drive, but they renamed it to uh, honor the civil rights activist Hosea Williams, who is also, I don't know if he's the great grandfather or grandfather of Portia Williams from Real Housewives. Anyway, somebody let me know the lineage, but either way, they're related. And he is known for working alongside MLK Jr., Joseph Lowry, and the list goes on. And a lot of them all have streets named after them in Atlanta. So that's also pretty cool too. Now, this bookstore, I was already gonna visit before I knew a little bit more information about it. It's a cute bookstore. It's neighboring this restaurant, pub, whatever it's called, but it's nearby. This bookstore is catered towards the kiddos, so I love that, but also they have a few YA books. They also have an area for more grown-up books is what they call them, which I think is pretty cool. There is an area for uh, signed copies, but that's not on the website to my knowledge. I noticed that they do have a clearance or a sales section. They do have accessories related to reading in books, picture books, and they have it by age range or grade level, whichever one. And I really enjoyed my time there. And as I was making my way around, I found out that the owner is a Rattler, so of course I'm gonna support my fellow alum, my Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University grad. I went to a historically black college or university, FAMU, in Tallahassee, Florida, founded in 1887. But I mean, yes please, I'm definitely gonna support and I'll be back. And you can also place orders online through the website and pick up your books later or you can create your wish list. It's really a nice website, look into it. I'll leave it down below as I've already stated. So here are a few clips of the inside of the bookstore. It's called Brave and Kind. I picked up a couple books, you know, you know, I don't need to pick up any more books, but I'm not mad about it. I picked up a couple things and I will show those to you now. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about these. So I picked up Black Girl Call Home and The Perfect Find. So this book was not on my reading list, but 
I found out that Gabrielle Union is going to play in the adaptation of this book and that film should be coming out this year. So I really wanted to read it before the movie came out because I've never done that before. And this is a book of poetry. If you don't know, there is a video that went, I guess you could say viral. I'm not, I don't know. The video went out, I saw it years ago, if I'm not mistaken, of a poet that recited a Kanye West related poem. She was not reading him for filth, but well, telling him about himself, hopefully opening his eyes. I don't know what came of that, if he ever heard it, which I'm pretty sure he did, but it didn't age well because he is no longer with Kim. So it's not my business, not my relationship. I just consumed the poetry. So I've already finished this. I don't know if you can tell, but I have quite a few poems that are marked here. It was good. So that's finished. But this one, I haven't gotten into it yet. There is an age gap romance. I don't know how bad the gap is. But really quickly, it says starting over is never easy, but it can be scandalously sexy. Okay. A 40-year-old former It Girl fashion editor is broke and desperate for a second chance. Okay, wow. Uh, okay. And then there is the 20-something. Okay, so the guy is a 20-something videographer assigned to shoot her digital series, and he's driving her crazy. So that's what the back says. I try not to read the whole thing because I want to be surprised, you know. But those are the two books that I got. I am excited to read that one. And let's go ahead and jump into the other day when I went to the museum. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to another installment of Black History in Atlanta. I'm getting myself together because we are going into the Apex Museum. It is a Black History Museum and it is located between Piedmont and Cortland Avenue in the Sweet Auburn District. There is parallel parking. It is on the same side as the Auburn Avenue Research Library. Beautiful library. I've never been inside of it. I might quietly go in after I leave the museum. I didn't realize it was so close, but then again, I haven't been to the Sweet Auburn District in so long. The next street over is Edgewood Avenue, where, I mean, I used to go quite frequently, and my church is actually on this street as well, but behind me. So Auburn Avenue is home to Martin Luther King Jr.'s home, also Ebenezer Baptist Church, the old and the new, they are across from each other. And you would also see the MLK Museum, which is also the resting place for Dr. King and Coretta Scott King. So much black history, so much civil rights history in this area. It's a beautiful thing. You can learn so much without breaking the bank. Mm -hmm. You can see so many placards throughout this district alone just explaining the history of this actual avenue. It is a free museum. Donations are accepted. I will leave their link down below. I'm going to try and get some clips of the surrounding area just so that you're familiar with Okay, just so that you're familiar with the area in case you do plan on visiting. There is ample parking. Um, it's pretty early in the day. They open at 11 on Saturday. I don't know if that will change by the time that you see this. But uh, for now, it is definitely... Okay, let me get it together, go inside, educate myself, you know. You can learn through books, movies, word of mouth. As long as the sources are credible, I feel like you can learn from just about anywhere and anything. But I'm rambling. <laughs>
to leave the camera like this. Anyway, I'm back from the museum. It was a really good experience, really good experience. The tour guide was good. There was a lot to unpack in the museum. And I think that everyone who is able to visit should visit. If you're able to donate, you should donate. I think that it was very impactful. Um, I'm getting hot sitting in this car, not just during Black History Month, but it should be visited any month. This is not just a museum that should be a Black History Month thing. I did it during Black History Month because like, I'm showing the people, but it's here all the time, year round. Please, if you're ever in Atlanta and you have like an hour, maybe two, please go and visit Apex Museum. Please, please, please donate. Even if you can't visit, maybe you can donate to the cause, like do something to keep this museum open and active and sharing history that is of our own. And of America. So, okay, so I have to go and get ready because I have another Black History related, Atlanta related, supporting Black art related thing. And that's gonna be in the next video, but I am pressed for time. I've been running my mouth with you. I gotta go. Okay, I gotta go.